Hello crafty friends, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a card for you using this beautiful coffee set from the recent Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release for 2024 and an older fall feeling set that I've had. This embossing folder is also from the Simon Says Stamp release for Stamp Timber. These are the Simon products that will be restocked throughout the rest of the year. So if they are currently sold out, just know they are coming back. These are not collaborations. These are Simon Says Stamp products. So if you follow me on social media, you're going to know that I am a coffee fanatic. Love coffee. I could drink it all day, every day. If it was the most healthiest thing for us, I do try to get additional water in when I can, but I love coffee. Here locally, we have a couple different coffee options. While I prefer to brew my own coffee at home, I will say right now I am in full pumpkin spice mode. I love pumpkin spice cold foam, so I am a Starbucks fanatic right now for this season. So I thought coloring this little coffee cup with a little bit of a Starbucks feel was the best way to go forward since I am team Starbucks right now. So I'm grabbing a couple colors from my Ohuhu alcohol markers. These are very inexpensive and you can find them on Amazon, but they are the alcohol markers that I have been using because I do not find that I am a color enthusiast. I enjoy coloring. I don't think I am the most bestest at this part of the hobby. And so having inexpensive markers has been really nice just for me to explore and kind of get to understand these types of markers and how they work. Typically when I am coloring, I use two colors and that is one of the complaints for these particular markers is that there's not a lot of color range. And so finding trios, which is a typical color blend for Copics, or at least from what I've seen, is hard to find because the colors don't flow very well. But I have been very successful in finding two color blends and just using those and layering them to get the achieved look. Now these markers do also dry back. I will say that I do not have experience with Copics and their drying back abilities, but I will say that these do dry back fairly different, especially those orange pumpkins. Right now they look a little bit uh, disjointed in my coloring, but they will dry back and smooth and they do get a couple shades lighter. So I really loved this set here, this um, harvest set with this beautiful little frame. And I have the dies for this, but this set also last I knew has stencils. I do own the stencils for it. And I do know that it was available prior to starting this video, but hopefully it still is. But this is an older set and it has dies and stencils. I chose not to use the stencils today because I did want a cohesive look with my coloring. And so I wanted to ensure that those pumpkins and that coffee cup looked the same here with the florals. So I'm using the same green color combo just to bring in the top of that coffee and then just choosing a bunch of different colors that have a little bit more of a regal feel and that will tie in to the fall kind of theme for things. Fall is probably my favorite season, although I'm not quite ready to say goodbye to summer. I do enjoy warmer days. I love heat. And in Michigan, heat in the fall is not as fun as it is in the summer because it means that we're just moving into winter. Now I'm just finishing up here, adding on some different colors. There's a couple different shapes of leaves in this little um, floral little sprig. And so I'm trying to find some colors that are following that fall theme. I don't want anything too bright, nothing too springy. And I'm trying to determine what's the best color to make that leave over on the right hand side. And I did decide to go with just a little bit more of a muted yellow because of those orange pumpkins. I'm, I didn't want to do orange. I didn't want to do red. And I thought the yellow was a nice balance to kind of tie in that sunflower. Now, again, that yellow leaf, you're going to see, it looks a little bit not blended, but as it dries back, it gets a little bit more blended as it goes on. 
Now I had the dies for the one set, but I did not have the dies for this coffee cup. I do believe there are dies available on the website. This is the Stamp Timber um, stamp set, so there are dies, I am pretty sure. It is a smaller set, so I do not have the dies for it as it's fairly easy to cut out. But as I was cutting things out, I did notice that I forgot to do the pumpkin stem. So I just went ahead and grabbed a dark brown color and we're going layering it on. And I'm just adding a little bit more here at the base. I'm not adding a second color. These are pretty simple. So I chose not to do that. Now this embossing folder is really beautiful. I embossed some D Nina Desert Storm and used it. It's a beautiful like fall themed basket weave. Really love the texture that it's giving. I have some more ideas coming up on how I want to use that. So this is how I'm kind of envisioning this card to be laid out. Now I did leave that frame blank for a reason. I was thinking I was going to cut out this image from a gold cardstock and layer it, but the, the thickness of it, I didn't really enjoy. So you're gonna see how I'm gonna pivot that. I still wanna bring the gold in, and this is how I'm gonna do it moving forward. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and use this black cardstock to do our sentiment. Here's that set. Like I said, it's it's really small. I don't know what we call this, a, um, a four by three baby size stamp set. Super cute, super simple. It is linked below for anybody who's interested in it. And just take a moment here. All of my links are listed below for the supplies used today. And they are affiliate links. And what that means that is if you click on a link and shop with me, I do receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. So it just helps designers when you do click those links to have a little bit of some extra cash. Some designers use it to pay their bills. So it's a great way to support us by clicking our links and ensuring that you shop with us. So we're just gonna go ahead and fussy cut this out. I love the sentiment. I will say my mom had a nickname growing up from her dad that was Punkin. And I just love, I wish it, it said Punkin. I think I could probably adjust it to try to get it to say that in the future, but I just love that Hey Pumpkin. So cute. So we are fussy cutting. I'm just trying to keep a little bit of a black border all around, really focusing on the tops of those letters that jut up to ensure that I'm being careful with those, but the rest of them, I'm not getting too crazy about it. Just kind of wiggling my scissors back and forth to give it a little bit of a bubble look. So because I couldn't cut out the frame and make it look like how I wanted, I decided I'm gonna use this gold paint and just very carefully paint the frame. I wanted to have it be shiny, but I also didn't want it to overcome that white border since everything else did have a white border. So I'm just taking my time. I have sped this up for the video, but I'm just taking my time to ensure that I am using that paint in between those lines and also, you want to make sure that you get the rest of it that's indicated down here. So I am finishing that up and then we're going to move on. I will say this gold has turned into one of my favorite things in my craft room. It was recently told to me by one of my crafty besties. It is a beautiful gold for splattering. It does come in two different colors. This one I would say is probably the more yellow gold. There is one that's a little bit slightly warmer on the brown side, but this gold makes the best splatter. Sometimes my splatter, when you use like a watercolor, it doesn't look fully opaque. And so it can look a little transparent, but not this one. This one is beautiful. I've used it a couple times in a few cards recently, but this one, I just used it here on this frame and it looks so solid. I love it. So now it's time to go ahead and adhere this card together. I went ahead and tape runnered the background down. I opted out of doing foam tape. Usually I like to pop my backgrounds up using some foam tape, but I knew I was going to get a little foam heavy on adding all of the designs and little uh, um, ephemera pieces here. And so I didn't want to add the extra bulk. I wanted to really focus on the bulk here. So I am using some foam squares from Simon Says Stamp. These are my favorite. These are also the ones that I'm using here are the thicker ones. Now I want to tell you about a trick here. When you're using these foam strips and you want to curve them, take off the backing paper. That's going to allow you to manipulate that foam strip so much better than if that backing tape was on there. The backing tape won't let you curve it and so if you take it off, it's a little sticky, so it's a little bit of um, uh, some 
things you have to work with and kind of get used to. But if you take it off, you can mold that foam tape in such a beautiful way, especially on this curved portion here. So that's my quick tip for the day. All right, so I am making sure that I have it lined up. It is a little offset to the right side, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the fun about handmade cards is the uniqueness that they bring. They're not perfect. They add that special little handmade touch. And so that's what I did here. Now, I recently put this new tip on my Barely Art Glue. This is one that comes with the set, and I put it on there for my daughter because she's in the craft room with me today, and it's a little bit easier for her to squeeze. And as you can see, I misjudged how much glue I was putting down, and so I'm trying to readjust that. I didn't want that glue drying and seeing it, so I'm trying to readjust it to ensure that it's not going to like totally ruin the card by having a spot a spot there and yeah and as I was putting on that pumpkin it got a little out of control too but tip for moms with little kids in the craft room that tip is perfect for them because they don't have to squeeze very hard typically I do have the fine tip on it and I just put that in the little vial that comes with the barely art glue set and just I can swap it out when she's no longer using it my only complaint is is that it does not come with a stopper and so you can't stop the you have to like clog it you know in order so it doesn't dry in the tip and there's no addition to do that so I did have to swap it out after she was done or it does clog so I went ahead and just popped up that sentiment put it right there in the middle and I'm going to keep this card really simple this is it I wish now I would have added a little bit of maybe some jewels but I'm going to finish it off with just some white highlights. I am new to white highlights. I, I'm not sure that I fully understand how to do them. There are some really great crafters that I think rock at doing white highlights. I'm learning. It's a process to try to figure it out, but really just having fun, making sure that it's appeasing to your eye. That's kind of what I'm shooting for. I do know that you want to highlight the darkest areas of where you've colored. That's that's something I do know and that's what I'm trying to do here. One of my complaints for this, and I don't know if it's the marker or if it's the um, pen, but on certain colors, and in this case particularly, it's the orange because I did not put it on red, but it also occurs with red or dark pinks, is that it absorbs the marker color underneath. Now these markers have been sitting markered images have been sitting for a while and so I was kind of shocked that it still did that. I haven't done any testing to see if I needed to heat set those pumpkins and if it would still bleed but that is the one thing I noticed that on those reddish orange colors that are like a little bit more saturation it, you do get your highlights bleeding into the color and it's hard to get a nice crisp white. Now, I probably could have put um, a sealant on it and then done the white highlights. That would have worked too, but honestly, it doesn't bother me, but I wanted just to make you aware that that's happening. And that's the card for today. Thank you for joining me. Again, links are listed below. I hope that you enjoyed this card. Let me know in the comments, and I hope that you have a beautiful day.